Hey guys. Have you ever really wanted something before? Maybe you walked through a store and you saw a shirt that had your favorite Paw Patrol character on it. Or maybe you played at a friend's house and they had a toy that you loved, but it's not something you have at your own house. How did you feel? Were you feeling frustrated that you didn't have that item? Or maybe you were feeling jealous of the person that did? Today we're gonna to read a story about a little boy who has his eye on a very particular pair of shoes. This book is called Those Shoes by Maribeth Foltz. Illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. <clears throat> I have big dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. It does look like it's getting cold out. Good thinking, Grandma. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now. Not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Mm. It's not very, not very polite for Brandon to brag about his shoes that way. I can tell he's proud. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Mm. He looks like maybe he's feeling a little different from the rest of the group. He's feeling alienated because he's not like everyone else. He doesn't have those shoes yet. Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff for kids who need things. Hey, we have a box like that at school. Got gloves and hats. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size. Velcro like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. Does he look very, very happy to be getting those shoes? I'm sure he's grateful the teacher helped him keep his feet dry and warm, but I don't think those are the shoes he wanted. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T., and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes and my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough, you never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Mm. I wonder, as disappointed as, as Jeremy might be feeling, his grandma was really excited to get him something that he wanted. And now she knows that she can't. She can't give him that thing. Do you think maybe she's feeling a little disappointed? Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for the holidays and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. I wonder what he sees. Black shoes with two white stripes. High tops. Perfect shape. Two fifty. That's a good deal for shoes. It's those shoes! My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Do they sound like they fit? Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of my shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says. I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and hoping that my toes fall off right there so they can fit. But my toes don't fall off, of course. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on, and I limp to the bus stop. He's limping. That means his feet are already hurting from these shoes. 
At home a few days later, Grandma puts on a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. Look at his feet. Can you see that? He's got band-aids on. Blisters from these shoes. And he's going to keep growing through the winter. What's going to happen when they're even smaller? I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear Mr. Alfrey's to go to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. Hmm. After school, I head to the park. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. I wonder if Antonio hadn't laughed at Jeremy because Antonio knows what it's like to need new shoes. Maybe Antonio was practicing empathy for Jeremy. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. I wonder what he's going to do. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I am not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Hmm. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. What's he going to do? Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I cross the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of the door. I push the doorbell. And I run. <gasps> he left a surprise. Look at how happy Antonio looks. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face. And mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. Now he's feeling really strongly about two different things. He's feeling conflicted. He's really happy that he could help Antonio, but he's really sad he still doesn't have what he wanted. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and he says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. Look how fast they're going in their boots. Oh. You know, I'm really impressed that even though Antonio didn't get, sorry, Jeremy didn't get exactly what he wanted, he was happy to be able to help someone else. The book also got me thinking, have you guys been growing since you've been at home? When I see you on Zoom and on Skype, I see that your hair has gotten a little longer. You guys look taller. I wonder, have your feet gotten bigger? We talked about measurement when I very first started in the aqua room, and we talked about non-standard units. Those are things like when we measured with our hands and when we used the unifix cubes to see how long different things were. We could also use our feet to do that. My foot is about the same size as the book. It's about as tall as this plant. It's equal to the length of my iron. This plant is about the same size as well. My jar of oatmeal is about the same length. And it's as long as Jordan is tall. You guys remember Jordan. Hi, Jordan. I could stay busy with measuring all day. If you guys have a scrap piece of paper at your house, you could use your shoe to trace your own shape and find out how much your feet have grown since we did this back in January. I bet it's a lot.